Okay, hi, and welcome to the IPFS Docs Ecosystem and Developer UX Working Group. Uh, today is the 30th of March. Is it the 30th of March? Yeah, it is. It is indeed. Under the 30th of March, 2020. Um, so we're just going to use this time to quickly go over various bits and bobs that are happening within the, the Docs Working Group. Um, there's been a few changes that are coming up. Um, that I guess we'll just dive straight into. So I'll just go ahead and share my screen. Oh, cool. I'm using two monitors today, so I can now select which monitor I want to use. Okay, cool. Can you guys see this document? It totally took over my whole screen. Yes, oh. I can. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just, yeah, right, cool. do things every week. Yeah. Uh, so straight off the bat, I'm just going to adjust this non OKR issue that we've got going on. Um, so go IPFS 0.5 release, um, that has popped up. So I mentioned this a couple, oh, God. Uh, there you go. Mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. Um, so this release is coming out. There's a load of new features and fixes that are going into it. It's really exciting. It's like the, one of the biggest, uh, go releases that we've done since the, the last release that came out in May last year, I guess. Um, so there's just some changes to the documentation that's going into that. There's an issue with um, users behind an NAT. That's an existing issue that goes out to all IPFS nodes. If you're sat behind an NAT, so a network address translator, um, your, your IPFS node will often not be able to communicate with the rest of the network. So there's essentially a lot of work going into making guides and telling people how to get around that thing without taking down the NAT. Because uh, the NAT is like a, a big, super useful thing, and taking it down is a huge security issue. So that's getting that's getting finalized this week. Um, updating the branch ready for release and merge into master. So the rest of the documentation for Go IPFS 0.5 is pretty much done. Um, it's just being sort of tweaked now so that when the time does come uh, for the release to go live, uh, we can just merge it straight into master without any any faffing around or anything like that. Um, I just got an email this morning saying that the release has been pushed back further into April, but that really shouldn't affect this group since most of the documentation is already done, unless there are major changes that come out as a result of testing the release candidate, um, which is my next point on the list. We need to test the release candidate um, now that that's been finalized to actually make sure that all the stuff I've written is correct. Um, so the, the, the only thing I've seen so far that may affect documentation are compatibility related issues. So that would affect probably 0.5 specific documentation around right. compatibility. But I, I, I believe that the, the, the goal is that they're fixing things to make things compatible more so. So that might result in something maybe even being removed from 0.5 documentation, uh, TB, right. TBD. Yeah, and uh, removing stuff isn't, that, I, I don't mind removing stuff, that's easier than throwing in stuff at a later date, um, which Jessica's laughing, so I feel like she's had to do that before. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's been, that's been a lot of the focus of my time for the last couple of weeks, um, just sort of rushing around, dealing with various developers, making sure that what I'm writing is in fact the truth and I'm not making stuff up. Um, so yeah, you got any questions about that specific point there? Just cool. don't do that dumb thing I've done before where you just comment out all the stuff for the features that didn't make it in and then someone finds those comments. <laughs> just, just don't do that, all right? Oh, wow. That's how they, I'm pretty sure that's how they found out various things in little Easter eggs in Microsoft products. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that later, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting stuff about, about e specifically e about Easter eggs, e intentional Easter eggs encouraged though. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I, I, I guess it wasn't Easter eggs. Yeah. I guess it was like spoilers thrown in. Anyway, um, cool. So next one, uh, Q2 OKRs have been drafted. Um, none of those links point to the actual OKR drafts. That's in a... That's in a uh, so on our recommendations list points to the air table, the publicly viewable air table that says all of the recommendations that appear Perfect. in one place. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so that leads to here and then the stuff that I'm assuming has like, the, here we go. So the IPFS docs stuff here. Yeah, if you scroll, yeah, scroll all the way to the right and you'll see, um, you'll see some green and yellow. Yeah, the decision. Yeah, decision is what you need. Uh, wait, where's decision? Uh, scroll left, scroll left. 
little further. Ah, yeah. there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah, do Let's defer and delegate. The dues, yours are in the dues, or and the dues and the delegates. So. Nice, nice. Um, sweet. So this is an excellent table for anyone watching that wants to jump into it. Uh, Jessica's done an incredible amount of work, and it's pr without doubt the widest table I've ever seen in existence. Yeah, before. sorry about that. I'm gonna actually I'm gonna drop in another link that is only the things that we've decided to take on for the quarter. Um, give me just a sec. Actually. Okay, cool, no problem. Um, while you're doing that, I'll just jump over the issues that we decided on. So deprecate the legacy legacy site as you just saw there. Um, this would be super exciting. A lot of the feedback we've had, in fact, the vast majority of the feedback we've had over the the new doc site has been positive. Um, everyone prefers it, way prefers it over the current existing like Hugo based site. Uh, ViewPress is just generally better. It's easier to work with, it's easier for us to write with, and it looks prettier. Um, so that's great. So we'll get that done probably within April at some point. Um, that's like a, a big P0 that I want to get sorted. Uh, the next one so a web developer's introduction. So this has been brought up quite a lot recently. Um, within the community and also internally within PL that, that we don't have a, a set of series for writers and like web developers to kind of hit the ground running. We've got loads of stuff that's very conceptual. So people can kind of come along and be like, okay, cool. That's what, that's what this stuff is. Or, okay, cool. That's how, you know, this little P2P stuff works, but there's nothing, there's no real meat that people can get their hands on. Um, thank you for that typo, uh, Jessica. Um, <laughs> So yeah, so creating this series would be um, just an incredible sort of boost to to that drive, really, sort of helping developers actually get get building something. Um, so the initial tutorial of this has already been written. So the basic, this is how you create a static site, and this is how you post it, and stuff like that. Um, there's a few contributors out there that I've spoken to that are super eager to jump on this as well, mainly web developers um, that really want to sort of help out building a cool, like a cool mini project that we can then host. Uh, on IPFS. Um, I'm going to see if Chris Waring wants to help out for like, just give his, give his ideas. Cause he was very much involved in the view press side of things. So it will be interesting to get his, his point of view on sort of single source, um, sorry, not single source documentation on uh, static site generators and things like that and how they can be implemented in IPFS. Uh, next one, single source documentation. This is, this is likely going to be an ongoing thing throughout the year and it's probably just going to be an ongoing thing is repos develop their own documentation but the main point of this is that we've got ipfs documentation all over the place so it's in loads of different repos and hector has been doing an incredible job recently of finding these mysterious repos and then kind of closing them or archiving them or bringing them around and then marking issues in the docs repo to say hey we probably need this documentation to live in docs so the idea of single source documentation is to bring every, all of that documentation into one place so it lives in one place locally. Um, this is going to involve a lot of managing and dealing with um, the, the owners of those repos to be like, okay, you, you still need to write documentation. But you kind of need to, number one, write it on our side or number two, write it on your side and bring it in the loop once you've finished it and then we can kind of tie it all together. Um, the best solution is probably just going to depend on the particular repo owners. I'm going to have to be, we're going to have to be pretty flexible when it comes to this. We can't, we're not going to be able to say you have to write in our repo. Um, just because a lot of, a lot of the tools and workflows that the repo owners use are probably going to be very sort of unique and tied to that particular repo. So we're going to have to be flexible in terms of how to get the documentation out. So just, just for context, um, in the past, the reason why we've had just docs scattered all over repos has just been because this thing has like evolved organically. It hasn't so much been because like people are super attached to the idea of having like their stuff in their repo. Um, and I think right before, right before you joined on Johnny, I think I was having, I was having sort of like vague conversations with everybody about like, Hey, is there any reason why particularly for JS and Go, you have those materials, is there any reason that you don't, that, that you wouldn't want us to pull those out of your repo and put that in main docs? And the answer was inevitably no, with the possible exception of um, API and CLI documentation, which is its own kettle of fish, which we can kind of ignore for the purposes of this discussion. So I'm not, I don't think you're gonna be running into a whole lot of like, like objection to this as a practice. I think the reason why you're seeing scattered is, is just because of organic growth rather than like people actually having a reason for not wanting, um, wanting their repos. Okay, that's good. That makes that makes my job a bit easier then. 
Um, and yeah, like you mentioned sort of API stuff, there's a lot of, not a lot, there's some automation that happens, um, but that's just going to be another hurdle that we'll have to deal with later on. Um, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm like my secret, my secret hope is that maybe that could be like our focus for Q3, like a, a big meaty project for Q3. But... Yeah, yeah, because I was, when, yeah, the start of this year, I was like, oh yeah, we can do automation and API stuff in Q2, and no. It's, it's going to be so much work. And yeah. it's going to, I think, one of the things I want to do is throughout this quarter, I need to sort of get buy-in from those repo owners so they can kind of contribute time to help out because it's not something that we could do on our own. We'd need their expertise. So it, it I have some thoughts on that. that we, can take, we can take offline the next time you and I have, have like a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Um, cool. Just some sort of strategic things that I've floated in the past. Um, but I think I think it's just like I I don't know I don't know about the both of you, but I would be <laughs> I'm leaning a lot more towards doing this slowly and intentionally in the case of API and CLI docs um, than building something quickly that's only moderately less awful <laughs> than right, what right. we have right now. <laughs> right. All right. Sweet. Cool. Um, and the last one. This is a sorry. Are, you, are we all done for single source documentation? Yeah, um, I, I will. I will know. I'll merge all that stuff. Um, I need to talk to Hector about getting some more information in. But right now, as of you know, this one thing I wanted to wrap up before the end of the quarter was to get everything that's in the IPFS slash IPFS repo into more frequently edited locations. So IPFS IPFS was basically just a readme to point us to other locations, which I think was has sort of been the intention for that repo for, for a while, um, and we're close. And um, hopefully that should be done by the end of this week. So thanks for looking over that code. Cool. Um, yeah, that'd be cool. I didn't even know. Like, I found all these new repos I didn't know existed. <laughs> so it's such an exciting two weeks. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's like 255 repos in the IPFS org. And um, fortunately, as a result of a lot of things, hopefully, the ecosystem ought to be among them. Um, Hector's like the repo vendor right now, and it just hasn't been as well about tidying things up. And, and I'm excited to make the most of that momentum for as long as we have it. Yeah, it's handy. He's, he's got the unique amount of skills of, you know, he's, he's passionate about it. And he also has the right access to be able to change these kind of things, which is always handy. Um, okay, cool. And I'll quickly jump onto the last one. This is a P2, I think I said it as. Um, so it's not as important as the other three, but still I'd like to get it done. So it's automate the docs. Um, this isn't automation in terms of API automation, automation, uh, automation, automation. Um, it's all things like automatic grammar testing, automatic spell checking, automatic broken links, checking, checking the images aren't broken, things like that. Um, three of these things are fairly easy to do. So spell testing, broken links and broken image references fairly easy to check grammar checking um, could be an issue purely because I, I've taken a quick look around and I can't see any decent um, grammar checkers that have already been built um, sort of in, in node or yarn or anything like that. Um, so that could be trickier to implement. Um, so that one might get pushed off to another day until we have more time to potentially build our own. Uh, internal grammar checker that we can then open source and you know give to the world which i think would be really useful um i'd really enjoy it uh, and then we can tie these automation cycles into either like circle ci or uh whatever github uses or there's something in viewpress right now before you push through viewpress it it runs through lint things and check stuff so we could throw it into there but again that, that'll all get attached on the end of that okr um but yeah that's that one again like i think it'd be really handy but it is a P2, so it comes after everything else. Um, thoughts on that? I think um, there are probably some very, very common first order grammar things that we can automate without having to write our own giant grammar checker. Um, things that are just sort of idiosyncratically common to us, like uh, we have a bunch of writers who whose native language is a language that doesn't use like definite articles. Um, <laughs> like that's something that could be super easily checked for. Um, just stuff like that. I think that there's probably a small handful of stuff that could be fairly simply hand coded and get us a long way um, grammar wise if we, if we end up with this point. Cool, cool. Well, if um, when it comes around to, to doing this point, then I might loop you in and get some yeah, totally. and get more of your thoughts. 
Cool. Cool. Um, so that's OKRs. Any any last questions or thoughts, first concerns about OKRs? I had a question about the meeting time slot. Um, is that updated in the calendar and in the readme? It's not. No, uh, I just remembered that this morning. So okay. just while my coffee was brewing, I threw that in there. But so. Sweet. Uh, on to that one, yeah. So there's a new uh, meeting time slot for the last Monday of every month. Um, this is an effort to, number one, kind of consolidate everything um, and save people time a little bit and also keep it a bit more asynchronous. Um, this meeting is useful, but uh, kind of uh, the ecosystem team and Dietrich in particular is trying to promote a bit more of a, an asynchronous uh, workflow. Um, Especially while all day yesterday, my uh, my internet was just non-existent. So I was very asynchronous yesterday. <laughs> it was a Sunday, but you know, could happen any day of the week. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, that's what's going on there. Um, there is also going to be a place for docs discussion. So it's going to be a static place, either in the uh, discuss forum, so discuss.ipfs.io, mm -hmm. or built in within GitHub's uh, discussion platform. Um, I'm going to get on that today. I was hoping to get that done by today, but other things kind of cropped up. Um, so there will be now a link within uh, the docs repo pointing to where the static discussion is going on. Um, Question. Yes. When you do that, can you please add a link out to that in the widget that we're embedding in the bottom of every piece of docs content that's like, is this helpful? file a PR, that, that thing, that repeatable yeah. part that appears on the bottom. Sweet. Uh, da, 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 this stuff down here. Um, I actually put it under the, was this information helpful? Oh yeah. Okay, cool. Cause, yeah. Cause yeah. once we deprecate, once we deprecate the, uh, legacy site, we're going to get rid of the, the site is in beta block. So yeah. Excellent. Yeah. No, I can throw that in there. No problem. Um, Sweet. yeah, I just need to figure out what this, I don't even know if, GitHub discussions is still in beta. Discussions. And I don't, I, I, I'm kind of torn. Like we're trying really, really hard to push everybody to discourse as much as possible. Um, okay. I, I might be inclined to just, to just sort of to do that. Um, yeah. But on the other hand, eventually things are going to manifest themselves in like PRs to the talk site. Right. So this is sort of a gray area. Um, I mean, I think, yeah, I would prefer to use the forum to be honest, because number one, it gives us a bit of redundancy. If GitHub ever goes down for whatever reason, the discussion can still take place yeah. in, in discussion. I also, I'm also envisioning like a bunch of scenarios where somebody's like, I want thing X in the docs because I'm working on project Y that does thing Z. And then that's real easy to branch people off into like, Hey, all these other things, all these other folks are talking about things that over here. So in terms of like interconnection of the discussion, that that's cool. But yeah, at some point, once it manifests itself in like actual issues in the docs repo, um, then you're branching off again. Also, that said, as part of the overall site deprecation, um, IPFS docs v2 is getting moved back and right, all the yeah. switch are ruining. So that might be another call to have it living in discourse. Yeah, good point. Um, oh, I'm so excited to have issues that reflect the docs actually point to the same <laughs> repository that is the docs. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thought about that. Exciting. Okay, cool. Um, so it looks like Discuss is probably going to be that place. Um, I don't know. Dietrich was making a face, though, and he's now not making a face, but he's not not making a face. So. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm on the fence about the, about the all roads lead to discourse. I think it's it's good for some types of discussions. It's not good for all types of discussions. Yeah. But that's well, branching it. out branching out when what channel goes to what is uh, in our list of recommendations. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the the only the only thing I wanted to comment on was I, I think that OKR okay, prioritization is is mostly right. Um, I think that my, the the uh, deprecating the legacy site and launching the beta site into release is P zero, and if everything else there drops, fine. Like I I would. So it, it, I would encourage a harsh prioritization there with what little time we're gonna have this quarter. Um, you're gonna need a lot of time for flexible response for things going on outside of work. So I would say just take all of anything that not P0, set it aside, mm -hmm. unless, unless you're just scratching an itch and it's gonna make you feel good and feel like you're able to 
you know, move some stuff forward. But prior to us, that that one that one bit more than anything, I think that'll that'll give us the most that'll give us the most flexible space moving forward because the old site will then be gone and not a thing that we have to worry about. Yeah, no good point. And a, and uh, a, a big win for the for the community and and new developers coming to the project as well. Yeah, and that is the only P zero listed here. The two cool. middle ones, so web developer and single source docs, they're P one, and then ultimately the docs is P two. Um, okay, great. But yeah, cool. I'd say P P wood, everything else P five. Nice. I mean, te technically, right? Uh, it's good to have those priorities there, but then how you and how you figure out how to spend the time. I think, uh, yeah, feel free to let the other stuff drop. Nice. Okay. Cool. Um, sweet. I guess that's everything. Uh, anything else anyone wants to bring up? It's all good. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining, right. everyone. Um, speak to you again. I guess on the when is the last. Day, or last Monday of April. Uh, that'll be the 27th of April. So I'll put a link into the docs repo and change the things there and then change the community calendar as well. But yeah, see you then. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so Have much. Take care. Cool. Cheers.